Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to another Morales tutorial video. Today, we are going to give a look to the guest transfer by wallet endpoint for the Python APA. This APA gets the transfers of NFTs given the wallet and other parameters. So basically, what we want to accomplish is something like this. We have these input fields on which we are going to put a wallet address. The chain per default is Ethereum and the limit of which amount of transfers we want to be shown on the screen. So if I click here, I get the information of those transfers. The token ID which was transferred, the block number, who was the sender, who was the receiver, and also the transaction hash we always can check on a block explorer like Etherscan. So if you want to learn how to do this, keep watching because we are just getting started. If we go back to the APA reference and paste here the same address, then click try it, we are going to get this JSON response. This response has all the information we need to show on the screen about the transaction of this wallet address. So for today's tutorial, we are using Django on the backend and React on the frontend. So what we are going to do next is copy the code Morales provide us and try this on our Django server. As we are using Django, which is based on Python, we are going to just copy the Python script, go back to my Visual Studio code on which I have already prepared the Django project. And in this new script called services.py, which is empty, I'm going to paste. And now some parameters are required here or API key. And if you don't have a Morales account yet, this is the part of the video when you hit house, go ahead to Morales.io, create a free account, and here on your admin Morales.io, the Web3 APAs, you are going to have your free API key. So let's copy this, go back to the code, paste it here. For the address, I'm going to use the exact same one I used before. And then we have these parameters direction from block to block limit and cursor if we check out the python sdk we discover that direction is to differentiate the transactions coming and the transactions outgoing from block refers to the minimum block number from which to get the transfers to block is to get the reserves at this block number the limit is again the amount we want to be shown and the cursor is just used if you have multiple pages and you want to refer the last page. So we are going to start on block one. And for this parameter, we are going to use an arbitrary number. Ideally, you will want to have the last block number here. And there was plenty of ways to accomplish that, both in the front end and in the back end. But for today's tutorial scope, we are just going to use this number. The limit is going to be set up as 10 and we are not going to provide a course. So let's try this out. Back to our terminal, let's run python services.py. And as you can see here, we got the actual response as a Python dictionary with all the information of the transactions. So as we already know, this works correctly. Let's transform this in something more useful for our use case. Basically, I'm going to transform this into a function, which is going to receive the address, the chain and the limit as parameters. And with the magic operation, we have the function ready. The function is named get NFT transfers, and as I already said, it's going to take the chain, the address, and the limit as parameters. Also, remember that using your API key into your code is a security risk, so I'm going to change this into an environment variable as well. Now we have this n variable Morales API key, and if you want to set up yours, you just have to go to the .env file and paste your API key here. So that's it. This script is ready to be used on the backend, so let's do it. Here on the project views, first of all, don't forget to import that function. From dot services, import get NFT transfers. And also we are going to import JSON. So in this new view called get transfers, which is going to get the information from the front end through this request variable, we are going to set up the chain equals to request.get.get chain. The same for the address and the same for the limit. With that, we are ready to use that get NFT transfer function. So NFT transfers going to be equal to get NFT transfers. And just to be cautious, we are not going to use positional arguments here, but instead specify each one of them. So chain is going to be equal to chain address to address and limit to limit. If you remember, this function is going to give us a response like this, but this is a Python dictionary 
which JavaScript is not capable to deal with. So we are going to transform this into a JSON. JSON transfers equals JSON.doms NFT transfers, and we just have to return this JSON transfers. So return HTTP response of the JSON transfers. That's it for the view. Now we have to add it to our URL path. So let's copy the view name, go to URLs and create a new one here. Also, don't forget to have imported the views from your app. So here, path get transfers views dot get transfers. And as we are using relative path, let's also name it. So name get transfers. And this is all we have to do for the backend. Let's see the front end. First of all, to be sure we are able to use those relative paths, don't forget to add the IP address of your Django server as a proxy on package.json. As we are running it locally, the default IP address for Django server is localhost in the port 8000. And also we are going to connect to Django using Axios. So if you don't have Axios installed yet, go ahead and use an npm install Axios. Then import it over here. So for the front end, these input parameters, wallet address, chain, and limit are already attached to this params variable we have here. So we have params.chain, params.address, and params.limit. Also, I have a function called refresh NFT transactions here, which is using Axios to connect to the backend. So in this get statement, let's connect to the endpoint we just created slash get transfers question mark and we are going to send this address chain and limit as the parameters so using the auto completion we have it if this goes well i have a console log here to see the response and if something goes wrong well we have this catch statement let's save this and this refresh nft transactions is used every time we hit this get transfers button so let's give it a try however before that remember when i said that python is going to return as a dictionary javascript is not able to understand well this limit is going to be sent as a string and the input parameter is an integer so on the backend let's just do this hotfix and transform this limit also into an integer so we are not going to have any problems here now we are ready to test this out let's set the wallet address the chain by default is ethereum and the limit by default is 10 so get transfers and as you can see here we have the actual response and in this result section we have all the transactions obviously based on the limit because i just got 10 inside of each one of those we have all the information we want the block number the token id the sender the receiver and a lot more so the only thing left for us here is to take this json response and show it over here as i showed you at the beginning of the video so in the front end, instead of just using a console.log, we are going to use this set NFT transactions and we are going to store the rest.data.result. And down here, I already have prepared this render transactions, which is going to map through all the NFT transactions from the response and render a card out of each one of them. So let's put the parameters here. The token ID is going to be equal to transaction.tokenID, the same from the block number, and the same for the sender, the receiver, and the transaction hash. So I'm done here. Let's try this again on our web page. So let's put the address for the same chain and the same limit, click here, and boom, we have the response of all the NFT transactions this wallet has. Exactly the same as I showed you at the beginning of the video. And this was really easy, isn't it? Because with just this small portion of code, we were able to connect to the Morales API and get all the NFT transactions this wallet has. And this works for any wallet on any EBM compatible blockchain. That was it for today's video. Don't forget all the code for this lesson is on the GitHub repo, so don't forget to check out the video description. And as you already hear, 
click here to subscribe and turn on the notifications, and also click here to learn more about Morales technology and see more videos. I'm serious. Click it. Do it now. Go ahead. See more videos. You did it? Nice. See you on the next occasion. Bye.